If I could get that in the low threes, like 320, 325, mm -hmm. I, that, I think I could make that work. Welcome back to this special video series. This is the fifth video now that I've created where you get to watch me get on the phones and show you how to make offers on distressed real estate properties using real case studies. And on this video, you get to look over my shoulder and watch me make a low offer on a bank owned property in the Rochester, New York market. Now you'll see firsthand how I build rapport, reset expectations and justify my low offer. And here's the cool thing. This agent does 30 bank owned properties a year and commits to giving me first look at all of his listings. Trust me, if you wanna learn how to get bank owned properties cheap, this is a video you don't wanna miss. Coming up. For a limited time, you can get a free copy of Jerry Norton's Data Cruncher software, which finds cheap houses in your area. Get it now at mydatacruncher.com. If you're new here to this channel, I'm Jerry Norton with FlippingMastery.com and this channel is all about ways to help you make money wholesaling and flipping real estate so you can live your dream life. Be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss new videos. Like all of the other videos in this Watch Me Make Offers Live video series, I'm gonna break down the call and explain what I'm doing so that you can see it in action. By the way, if you'd like to see the other videos in this series, I'll put a link to the playlist in the description box below for you. Now, before we get into the call and before you ever go after bank owned properties, it's important you understand how bank owned properties work. I'll give a brief explanation now, but I have two videos where I go into greater depth and detail about bank properties. One is about the entire process for how a foreclosure works and how a property becomes a bank owned property. And the other is a really popular video where I give 10 tips for going after bank properties. Now I'll put both of those video links in the description below for you to watch later. Once a property has officially foreclosed and no one buys the property at the foreclosure auction, the bank takes back the property. Once that happens, the bank assigns the property to what's called an asset manager. The asset manager's job is to liquidate or sell the property. The asset manager works with a local real estate agent to market and sell the property on market. Now, depending on the size of the bank, size of the area, and the relationship with the asset manager, a bank owned listing agent may get dozens or even hundreds of bank properties each and every year. That's why it's so important that you build relationships with all of the bank listing agents in your area. In fact, on the call, we're gonna to cut to in a minute, you'll hear the bank listing agent mention the asset manager, and he even tells me that he gets approximately 30 bank property listings a year. Now on the call, you'll see him actually bring me another deal, and he even commits to giving me first shot at all of his bank listings. That's huge, so keep watching. The deal we're discussing in this video is 4,000 square feet sitting on over an acre, and we found this deal using my on-market deal finder software tool. This software tool is really cool because it finds on-market properties that are listed for sale below market value. Now, if you'd like an unrestricted free login, just go to mydatacruncher.com. So this software found this deal and prior to calling the agent, I spent a few minutes looking at the pictures and comps and I determined that it needed about $65,000 in repairs and that it would resell for approximately $550,000, which means following my 70% formula, I would need to get this property for $320,000 to make it a good deal in formula and it was just reduced to $399,000, which means I need to get this deal for about $80,000 below the current asking price. If that seems intimidating to you, then you really need to learn my three-step process for making low offers. Step one when making an offer is to build a relationship of trust, and the best way to do that is to show interest, ask questions, and ultimately get the seller or agent to talk and feel comfortable with you. Now, some sellers or agents are open and they're eager to share their situation, others aren't, and require you to pry and get them to open up and lower their guard. Now, let me show you how I do this. Let's cut to the call now, and I want you to pay special attention to how first I just try to create a relationship and I don't say anything about my offer price. Take a look. Good afternoon. Yeah, hi, is this Ed? Yes, who's calling? Yeah, my name's Jerry Norton. I'm a real estate investor calling about one of your listings. Do you have a minute? Okay, go ahead. I see you just did a price reduction. Yes, we did. Yeah, I've been yes, kind of watching this one. What's going on? Nice property. Uh, did you read it? 
anything about it in the MLS? Or? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I'm looking at it right now on the description, and I've spent a little time looking at numbers, and this is like right in my wheelhouse of the type of flips I like to do. I'm a, so I'm a okay. flipper. I do fix and flip. Okay. Cool. So I'm looking at what it would take to renovate it, update well, it. I mean, it's a cosmetic. It just needs updated. It looks it pretty just clean. Needs, exactly. And exactly. It, it says it's got an in-ground pool because a lot of the comps over there have pools. Yes, in-ground pool, which probably needs a lot of work. Okay. And it's been vacant. It's probably been vacant for maybe six, seven years. Could oh be. yeah, wow. I want to say this is a septic. You know, you've got public water, but it's on a septic system, which would have to be inspected also. Yeah, and that pool would definitely need to be checked out and because the pool, yes, that, that there, could turn way. into twenty grand. You know, easy. Oh yeah, but I mean, it's a nice lot, nice area. Mm-hmm. We had a couple of calls, but nothing. You know, so right now we went from four twenty down to three ninety nine. I see that. And I did put a call into the asset manager, and I says, you know. This price is affecting exposure. So now here we are at three ninety nine. How many of these do you get, no. bank properties? Well, you know, you go back two years ago, I did maybe 30 of them. So you can see here that we don't talk at all about my offer. Instead, I ask questions and I get him to share information. Questions I like to ask are, what's going on with the property? Or what can you tell me about this property? That's a great way to get the agent or seller to start talking. It really doesn't matter what you talk about, but I like to ask halfway intelligent questions like, does this property have a pool? Now I ask that because there aren't any pictures of the pool, but the listing says that it has a pool and all of the comps in the area have pools. So it's an important thing to find out. Now he also told me it's on a septic and then it's been vacant for six to seven years. And he told me that they just reduced the price from 420 to 399,000 and he mentioned the asset manager. So all of this is just talking about the property. Now this is really helpful to give me further insight about the situation, but my real intent is to build a relationship. I even asked him how many bank properties he gets, which he said 30 in a year. Now that gives me an idea of how big of a bank owned agent he is. And at this point, I could probably move to step two, but the agent keeps sharing info with me, so I just go with it. Now watch for a minute as he brings up that the property taxes are really high and how I use that to my advantage. Take a listen. Right now, the taxes there are 22,000 a year. Whoa, yeah, I'm looking yeah. at that now. There is a certain stipulation. If you purchase it and they give you a certain amount of time if you wanted to flip it, I mean, my concern would be the same. If I buy it, fix it, and put it up for sale, a buyer's not gonna wanna pay 22 grand in taxes. Very good, Jerry. Yeah, there are people that, uh, obviously, you know, the person that purchased this, they bought it. They were fine There's with people it. That, oh yeah, you know, and, and the way I look at it, Jerry, when property taxes get so high, property values drop. They drop. Well, because your, your, your monthly changes, because now you're spending $1,800 a month just in property taxes. Sure. Sure. So your buying power goes down. Right now, it's they're at twenty two thousand two hundred and eighteen dollars. Yeah. Wow. And like I said, it's assessed right now at five seventy five. Yeah. Obviously, whoever purchased this at this price, three ninety nine, they'll probably come lower than that. So you'll see a reduction in those property taxes until I flip it back at five fifty. <laughs> then they're back right back up where they were. Now there's some hidden strategy here that I hope you caught. When he mentions the high property taxes, I state how that's a concern for me. And then he tries to tell me that when it sells at a discount, they'll get reassessed for the lower amount. And then I came back with, yeah, until I flip it for 550,000 and they go right back up. And you hear him laugh. Now this lowers the guard. And this is important because I'm still building rapport, but I'm also starting to move into step two, which is what I call resetting expectations. This is where you build a case for your low offer before actually giving your low offer. This step is especially critical if the seller's asking price is really low comparison to your offer, which is common. Now in this case, the bank is asking 399,000 and I need to be at 320,000. Now the best way to reset the seller's expectation is by using market data to justify your position. Listen to how I do that. What do you what do you think this property would sell for once it's fixed up? Oh wow! I mean, you know, I like you know the way it's situated. I, I really enjoy the lot. It's elevated. I think you can get a good buck for this. 
if you were to buy this correctly. I'm looking at comps right now. If I look at some comps like over 4,000 feet, kind of big like that brick, at least uh -huh. an acre, you know, there's mm -hmm. three or four comps in the past year that are pulling in, you know, between like 120 to 150 a foot, mm -hmm. which conservatively would put us kind of at like around a 550 price point. Mm -hmm. And again, that would be assuming that I get everything updated on it. And if you paid 350, you know, yeah. and maybe can update it I'm for a, another maybe 60, 70, 80,000. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I, I kind of need to be more like 320. So first I asked the agent, what do you think this property will resell for fixed up? Now I love asking this question to agents. Not only does it allow me to see what they think compared to what I think, it also makes them feel like I value their expert opinion, thus strengthening our relationship, and it starts to build a case for where I need to be on my offer as an investor. Now you'll notice that he didn't really answer my question, so I went on to explain how using comps, I came up with a 550,000 ARV. Now this is what I mean by using market data to establish the numbers. Now after saying that, he threw out a number of 350,000 as a buy price, which was the perfect time for me to present my desired price of 320,000, which isn't that far off of his $350,000 number. Now getting the agent on my side about the right buy price is really important so that he'll go to bat for me. So before going any further, it's time for me to get this agent to be my new best friend. Now I do this by using my double dip strategy and offering to let him represent me as the buyer's agent on the offer. That means he'll get the 3% commission for being the listing agent, and he'll also get another 3% for bringing the buyer. Essentially, he'll make double the commission by getting my offer accepted. Now I do this on purpose so he'll be highly motivated to work with me. And wait until you see how well this works. Now for a deep dive into how to do my double dip strategy with agents, I'll put a video for you to watch in the description below. So let's take a listen now to how I do the double dip technique and explain to the agent how he's gonna help me get this deal. Take a listen. So first of all, I'm unrepresented, so I'd let you represent me on the offer as okay. buyer's agent. Are you allowed to do that? Yeah, I would act as a basically a dual, dual agent. agent. So we'd let we'd work that way on this on this deal. And then I would just need your help to coach me along, like what to do, when to resubmit our offer, and we'll just play the patient game. I think we put it in now, so they we established that there's a cash buyer at 320. Probably not gonna take it, because they just did a reduction and we're not, we're off a bit. Oh, um, definitely, you know, they would definitely counter that, definitely. Okay, so we'll let them counter, but then, you know, since you kind of are in, in tune with the asset manager, when the price reductions are coming. You know, what this asset manager probably will do is, Maybe another four or five weeks, they'll buckle it down again. Mm -hmm. If you just kind of coach me along and say, hey, Jerry, they're they're about yeah, to do yeah, another yeah, reduction. Yeah. Let's put your offer back in. And then a lot of right. times with these bank properties, it's just timing and being patient. It is. It is. You know, and I've dealt with other companies, too. I've been doing this probably four or five years now. So when presented to represent me as a buyer's agent, he agrees to do that on this offer. This is technically called dual agency. And then we talk about how to make the offer and how since he works with the asset manager and he has an insight as to what's going on, he can help me know when it's best to reoffer, et cetera. In other words, how to help me get this deal. And is he on board with this? You bet, why? Because I'm letting him represent me on his own listing so he makes twice as much money. So next, I went on to establish how we're gonna to work together and our ongoing relationship. Take a listen. I mean, I just, I just follow a formula. You know, I'm very, I'm very regimented about it. It's, I, there's no emotion. You know, I've been doing it for a long time. So the numbers are the numbers. I'll give you what it is. If we can get that to work, great. If we can't, no big deal. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if you're no, okay no, to you're work fine. like that, I, I just don't wanna, I don't want my offer to be offensive. It doesn't sound like that is offensive to you. you know? No, in other words, you're showing interest, right? Yeah, if I could get that in the low threes, like 320, 325, Mm -hmm. I, that, I think I can make that work. I am making some assumptions that I don't have like a big pool thing or a septic issue or whatever. For now, I would just make that offer. We would have some due diligence. If the bank wants to entertain that, I would spend some time out there with some inspections and just double check a couple of those things. But assuming would those things- be, Would this be cash type of thing? Yeah. Or? Okay, very good. But if you tell me what, what we need to do, we'll- Well, what I would do is obviously I would, you know, send you a New York standard contract Perfect. so you can review it. Yeah. 
Could we do this? And could I could I email you price and name and terms and closing date oh, yeah, and, all, and yeah. then you and then you create the contract? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Let me give you my email address. Perfect. Now, what I did there is really important because I want to make sure that we're clear that I have to get a deal and it has to be in formula. I want to make sure he understands that so that he's not shocked or confused with my offer prices when they're really low. After that, I go back to the particular deal that we're working on and I move into step three, which is to make the offer with confidence. I tell him that I need to be at 320000 on my offer and I also need due diligence in the form of an inspection contingency so that I have time to to verify my rehab number is correct. Remember, I haven't seen this property and it's been sitting vacant for six to seven years. Without a doubt, there are some issues with this property. So he's fine with that and then I get him to agree that I can send him an email with the terms of everything I want included in the offer. Remember, since this is on market, the agent will write the offer using his state approved forms but I need to tell him what to include in that offer. Now I did a video where I break down everything you need to include in an offer when you put that in the email to an agent. I'll put a link to that video in the description below so you can watch it later. Now I'm really glad that you made it this far in the video because this next part is perhaps the most important. Now that we have everything squared away on this offer, I want to make sure I establish a long-term working relationship with this agent. Remember, this agent does about 30 bank-owned properties a year. My goal is to become his number one go-to investor for all of his distressed bank properties. Take a listen. I'll let you represent me on any of your listings. So if you, oh, okay. any of this bank stuff you get, if you know about it and you can give me a heads up before it goes live and we can get our numbers in, All right. maybe we can get a deal done before the competition comes in. Oh, very good, very good. Because there be, could be a couple other ones that I know of. Oh yes, yeah, definitely. yeah, any of these you get, let us know. Or if you know a reduction's coming, then that's, and you want oh, yeah. to, you know, that's the time to get it back in there. If you could save our contact info and then any movement oh, you I see. definitely will. Yeah, we'll, we'll be right there ready to go. Very good, very good. You know what, I got another one. I'll look at it. Okay, this one here, let me give you the address. Okay. Are you ready? But this one here. I got it up, big brick one, oh, yeah. Let me tell you, you got a lot of square footage, including the, the basement's huge, it's like about 5,500 square feet. I just dropped that today. Wow, that is golden right there. I am now his go-to for all of his bank properties. In fact, he even said, you know what? I have another one. And then we spent the next 15 minutes talking about one of his other listings that we agreed to look at and make an offer on as well. Now, hopefully this agent will be a source of deals for years to come. So after the call, we sent an email and he put together an offer and we presented that to the bank and now we're off to the races. So let's review. The three steps to making offers is step one, build a relationship of trust. Step two, reset expectations using market data. And step three, make the offer with confidence. And I hope you found this live case study video helpful. This is the fifth video in the series of live videos where you get to look over my shoulder and watch me break down how to make low offers using my three-step process. Again, I'll put the link to that playlist in the description below for you. And if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit that like button right now and leave a comment and let me know your biggest takeaway. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel with hundreds of videos and new videos released every single week. This is the fastest growing channel on YouTube for all things wholesaling and flipping. And if you like this video, I did another live call on a different bank owned property. Be sure to watch that video now and I'll see you on the next video.